A lot of business owners don't understand all the options available to them when it comes to healthcare options. So I wanted to talk through the different options and talk about what might make sense for you depending on your circumstances. Basically, there are three things that we're trying to juggle when it comes to healthcare. One is the premiums. The other is catastrophe coverage. So if something major happens, somebody has a major illness or a major accident, a car accident, something that's going to require significant bills, are you covered in that circumstance? Basically, to protect you from bankruptcy. And then finally is the day-to-day -day stuff, deductibles and covering prescription medications and little things like that, but little things that add up. So how do we balance these th three things out? Because they're all generally kind of pulling at each other. And the best way to think about it is to go through the different options. And basically there are four options for most business owners. The first is uh, basically to do nothing which doesn't sound like much of an option, but it's pretty common among especially new business owners to kind of just put their head in the sand and ignore the problem. And that is not a good option as we'll see here, but it has its advantages. So one of the advantages is uh, low premiums. So uh, it's not to be dismissed. You're not getting any coverage on day-to-day uh, -day deductible expenses, like expenses that would go towards your deductible. But again, you're not paying premiums. So that's, you know, that's not good, but the premiums are low, zero. Uh, catastrophe is, is very bad, uh, of course. So there's no catastrophe coverage. And that's really the problem with doing nothing. That's the biggest problem with doing nothing. So we need that catastrophe coverage. How do we get it? Well, there are the uh, Christian ministry plans. These generally are not going to be great for the catastrophe piece. That is the big problem with them is a lot of them don't cover the catastrophe expenses at all. So you're still exposed. And that's the main reason why we want insurance in the first place is to cover us and protect us from bankruptcy. It's We've been habituated to think of this as covering day-to-day -day expenses, partially because day-to-day -day expenses have gotten so high. Really, the purpose of insurance is even forgetting the health insurance, just insurance in general, is to protect us from these catastrophic events. And most Christian ministry plans don't cover that. But uh, they do have low premiums, which is nice. And most of them actually do a pretty good job at covering the day-to-day -day deductions. Still, for the lack of catastrophe coverage, that's kind of the, <laughs> that's the bottom line. For, for me and my opinion on, on how to look at this. So then we're basically on to normal healthcare coverage options. And we have two places we can go. The first is the marketplace, and the second is group policies. So you can't have a group policy until you have at least two people in a group. So at least one employee, this would not be a spouse uh, or an immediate family member. This would be someone else who would need health insurance coverage. They don't actually have to have the health insurance coverage. So if you have an employee, and they are covered by their spouse's plan, and they're therefore going to decline your group coverage option, then you, like your company can still have a group policy, but there's not a lot of advantage to it. Honestly, for most business owners, the marketplace is gonna be the place to go. And marketplace has uh, several advantages. The first one is premiums are all over the place. You can buy different types of plans, some more expensive, some less expensive. The one I'm going to talk about is I'm assuming that most business owners are generally healthy and generally have lower medical expenses. If that's not you, then you need to think about getting a, a higher cost plan and there are options there, but it, it gets too varied to go into in this video. So I'm assuming for most people, they're on the younger side with less ongoing medical expenses and no major health uh, you know, no major ongoing health costs. So if that's the case, the marketplace is really the, the best option because you can get a low deductible plan that I'm just going to say premiums are, you know, about even because they're not low still. But uh, your day-to-day -day deductible expenses also through this plan are not really covered that well. But the big thing is you get that catastrophe coverage. And this is, you just don't want to go bankrupt. The rest of it we can plan for. Group policy is generally the same, except premiums usually are higher. So uh, premiums usually are going to be higher. And deductions or day-to-day -day expenses generally are actually going to be better. And catastrophe coverage is still in place. 
So of these three, usually we're going to the marketplace. And part of the reason for the marketplace is that you can get subsidies there and your team can get subsidies. So if you don't offer a group plan and someone on your team is eligible for a health insurance subsidy, then they can qualify there. Now, if you're making too much money for it, then you're making too much money and, and you're not going to you know, you're not going to qualify for that subsidy. But even if you're not going to qualify for the subsidy, there's not many disadvantages to going through the marketplace versus getting a group policy. You're not getting the di the discount on the group policy that we've been kind of trained to think that we're getting. It's not really there. It doesn't exist in, in reality. So uh, the biggest reason to do a group policy is just to make it easy on your team uh, if you if you have the team. But it's a lot of times even better for your team if they go through the marketplace, but then it comes down to educating them. And is that something that you want to get into? And there's a whole discussion to be had there. But what I generally recommend is to take a marketplace policy that is a an HSA eligible policy and is going to be therefore a lower premium, higher deductible policy. This means day-to-day -day stuff. The insurance isn't going to even kick in until you get to six or sometimes eight, sometimes higher thousand dollars in out-of-pocket expenses. So how do you cover that? You cover that with the HSA and you're essentially self-insuring. So you put money every single month into an HSA. You, you know, that adds up to somewhere around, uh, let's see, if you're single, it's like, you know, 30, $3,800 or something like that, something close to that. Changes a little bit year over year. And then if you're married, it's about $7,200. Maybe $7,300 now. Uh, anyway, it changes. It goes up a little bit year over year. Those are approximately the amounts. And you put that money in. That money is tax deductible, but you don't use it. You don't have to use it. So if you don't have those expenses, then you just build it up and you're actually building up money inside this HSA that is tax deductible when you put it in and you don't lose it. And when we look at the other common option and a health savings account is a health reimbursement account, an HRA. But the big disadvantage to an HRA is that it's use it or lose it. So you put it in and you have to use it that year. Otherwise you lose it. So the HRA generally only makes sense if you know you're going to have very high medical expenses and you need to get more into it on top of what you can do for the HSA. So I'm talking about the 80% the here of what's going to work for most business owners. And that is a high deductible HSA eligible plan from the marketplace. That's going to keep your premiums down as much as we can get them down and then combine that with an HSA. And so you take that extra money that you're not paying in premiums, put it into a health savings account. And now if you need it, you have enough in that savings account to cover those day-to-day -day expenses. And if you don't have the day-to-day -day expenses, good for you. You get to build up the asset. You get to build up that savings account year over year. And the bottom line here is that it is going to be more expensive. This is one of the things that keeps a lot of business or a lot of potential business owners from going into business. They say, well, what about my health insurance costs? It's going to be more. <laughs> if you have an employer who's willing to subsidize health insurance costs for you, that's that's beneficial. But guess what? They're doing it for a reason because they're making more from you than they're paying you. That's the that's the way the math works. So if you can understand going in, yes, uh, having a business means I'm going to have more expenses. That includes health insurance, but it includes other things too. If you have a business, you're gonna have to pay advertising costs. Uh, you don't have to pay those as an employee. You have supplies and equipment and other things that you have to buy. Overall, you are going to have more expenses in a business than you are as an individual. So health insurance is no different. You're going to, it's going to cost you a little bit more. But the whole idea is you also have more income and you have no cap on your income. So yes, it's going to cost more. And yes, most business owners at the end of the day are better off even with that higher expense than they would have been staying as an employee with a, a ceiling on their income. So accept it, go in knowing what it is, and then do what you can to lower it by essentially self-insuring for the day-to-day -day deductible things. You keep your premiums down and you, you keep your premiums down by taking responsibility for some of the day-to-day -day items. And then you use a health savings account essentially to put money away tax-free to cover those day-to-day -day items. I hope that's helpful.
Let me know if you have any questions uh, in the comments or feel free to reach out in a direct message. Thanks.